How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this animation right here. We're going to be using geometry nodes and some shading to create this transformation kind of transition effect. I'm even going to show you how I did this lighting. Pretty fun, simple setup. We're going to disintegrate and just kind of bring this whole thing in and out. Uh, we're going to be using the delete geometry node. So if you've seen my past, uh, maybe two tutorials, I know I've been using it a lot. So this will be the last time I use delete geometry node for a while, but it's just so useful. I want to show you another use case of how good it is. And I'm going to show you some shading tricks, uh, but we're going to be having some fun with geometry nodes. If you want this exact model that I'm using, uh, I will link it in the description. And I ended up just kind of cutting off the bottom of it to make it easier on my computer. So you can do that if you'd like, or you can keep the whole thing. But being that this is all procedural shading and geometry nodes, uh, you can do this on literally any model you want. That being said, this tutorial is brought to you by Concierge Render. They are an amazing render farm. I've been using these guys for a couple years. They're my go-to render farm for rendering tough scenes or just things that I need to render while I'm working on something else. I can do two things at once. Um, really great people there, really great render farm. So if you wanna check them out, it's linked in the description. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to use concierge to render your scene. So we're gonna render this thing out in cycles using concierge. So that being said, let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. All right, so to do this effect, you are gonna to wanna to start out with any model you want. I'm starting out with this character. Again, any model works. You can even follow along with a sphere. So we have our model, pretty dense geometry. Um, I would subdivide whatever you have to kind of this level of density just to kind of get the effect that you want. So if you're following along with say an icosphere, you would wanna maybe subdivide it up to maybe there. So that rough density, um, or you can change it later if you want. All right, so we have our character. Let's hop straight into the geometry nodes workspace and let's make it happen. So I just have one window up here, one window down here. You can usually collapse the one that's right there. I'm gonna click new and then shift A and let's type in delete geometry. Now note, I am using Blender 3.0. So if you have the latest version, that is the latest official version of Blender currently. Let's go ahead and get in a color ramp. This is similar to a ton of the shading tutorials I've done before. So let's go ahead and get a noise texture. Plug that factor there. All right, so this delete geometry is, it deleted the geometry. With no settings on it, it just straights up deletes all your geometry. And the selection tab lets you put a texture in it to say where and when and where to delete geometry. So I'm gonna use this color ramp to bring that in. And there we go, we already have some really nice um, deletion or deleting of the geometry. And then you can use the scale to kind of depict where and how much, and it's just really up to your personal preference when and where you're gonna go ahead and delete your geometry. So here in the modifiers, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get in a smoothing modifier. And what that's going to do is notice how these edges are very jagged. We'll go ahead on that repeat and smooth everything out. But of course, while maintaining the shape of our character or whatever shape you're working with. And then you can still kind of play with that here. So when you add that smooth, it really does kind of smooth out that animation. Let's go ahead and add in a solidify modifier and then bring that thickness to really whatever your heart desires. And that's kind of all we're gonna to need to do. Now, depending on your model, you may need to subdivide it or even bevel. So if we bevel, that's gonna kind of sharpen up our edges or you can add in a uh, subdivision surface but really I'm happy with the density that I have now. And if I click back on the geometry nodes um, modifier, we can go back to geometry nodes. And this is the animation we have. So in your preferences, if you go to edit preferences and click on animation, make sure you're using Bezier or Bezier um, here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here where there's a plus icon and pull it up right now. We're gonna animate just the geometry. So I'm gonna hit this little um, button here and go to the timeline. And let's bring our color ramp all the way over till all the geometry is gone, right there. And then I'm gonna bring my cursor right over here. And then I'm gonna hover over this pot, I'm gonna hit I, and then I'm gonna to go to maybe frame 100 and then pull my geometry all the way 
in, and then I'm gonna hover over here and hit I again. And let's see how we feel about that speed. That's really nice. You don't want it to be too quick, then it's kind of jarring and you don't get to kind of appreciate the effect as it's actually happening. All right, so now that that's animating in, we're gonna animate it in just like this. Hold for a minute for the other animation to happen. Actually, let's just wait and do the shading now. So we want our first material right here. So let's go here to shading and start working on our first material. I'm gonna go ahead and save my project file and I'm going to click new. I'm gonna take away that timeline for now. Let's go here to the material preview and let's go here to the principled. Bring that base color to black. This is color part is just completely up to your preference. Even the material is up to your preference. But um, if you wanna follow along, feel free to do that. So I'm gonna go here and get in a bump node, shift A search, bump node, plug normal and normal, of course, our classic wonderful color ramp. And then we're gonna get a Voronoi. And then with the node wrangler add-on enabled, we're gonna hit control T and bring that object up. And then we're gonna bring this distance into the color ramp. And then finally put that color into the height. So F1, bring it over here to distance to edge. And then we're gonna bring that scale pretty high up to something like right here. And then now we're gonna get a nice pattern. I do, however, wanna kind of disrupt this pattern a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and get in a noise texture right there. And we're gonna get in a mix RGB, plop it right there and put our vector into color two. Now this is what that does. Once we add this mix RGB, we're allowed to, basically allows us to use just a portion of the noise texture on this effect, stretching things out. So let's bring that detail up to 12. And that's really all we're gonna, gonna need to do. I just wanted to add a little bit of detail within our character, make it look a little bit better. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna shift D on this color ramp and plug the Voronoi into here and let's plug that into the roughness. Let's add a little bit of roughness fun to this material so when we light it, it'll interact with our lighting. So if we bring this over, we can do that. That's all we need to do. So that's the first material. Let's go ahead and make the second, much more simple material that will dissolve over or even maybe under this bumpy material. So I'm gonna go ahead and shift D and then plug the BSDF into the surface. We're gonna get a color ramp, plug that into the roughness here. Let's get a noise texture. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna highlight the texture coordinate and the mapping, I'm gonna hit G to move it up closer to what we have here. Plug that into the vector plug the noise and the color ramp. Let's go ahead and change a little bit of our roughness. Bring that detail to 12, bring that roughness all the way up. And then we can kind of play with that. Click on the black and we want to bring that up a little bit, just like this. Let's go ahead and get a bump node. Let's get in a color ramp. And let's plug the noise texture into the color ramp color into the height, normal of the bump into the normal of the principled. So now let's go ahead and edit this texture. Let's bring the white in so it eats into the material, bring that strength down. And there we go, we've created our second material. So what we need to do is actually combine these. So we have just made this material and a minute ago, we created this material. So if you remember the animation that I created, one material goes right on top of this one. So let's go ahead and create that effect. Let's get in a mix shader. And then we're gonna plug the principle of this one right here into that top shader. So it'll bump that one to the ground. So basically what we want now is this, this whole shader plugged into here and this shader down here plugged into there. So these principles plugged in, that's our whole material. And now we need to separate them. So let's go ahead and get in a color ramp, get a noise texture, fiddle click, there we go, noise texture. Let's go ahead and bring the vector into this and bring the factor into the color ramp and finally the color into the factor. All right, so if you're not very comfortable or familiar with shading, that's okay. This is a pretty simple setup. So just to kind of break it down, the first material we made 
is all these nodes, it creates that little bumpy material. And the second material we made was these nodes, created that more flat material. Now what this mix shader is going to do is combine them with a texture. So if we bring this texture in, let's actually go to constant to get a hard edge. You'll kind of see that more obviously in a second. So if we bring that in, you'll notice this noise texture is now kind of the, it tells it where to reveal which material. So let's bring that detail up to 12, bring that roughness in. So now if we play with this color ramp, we want to start here. And then when it animates in, it animates that right off. So super easy. So let's go ahead and hit this little plus icon, drag it up and get a timeline. We're going to go ahead and animate this with the original animation. So let's press play, animate our character in, let it sit. Now we can start this animation. So we'll hover over this and hit I. We're at 126. Let's go to maybe 200 and then animate that texture in, hit I, and let's see how that looks. It's really quick. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna control Z. And so animate that in, let it sit. We'll go back to our 126 or so, hit I, go a little bit past 200 and animate that material in, hitting I, now let's see that. That's a little more satisfying. You can kind of appreciate it as it's happening. Pretty cool. All right. So now if we want to kind of look at this animation, animates our character in, texture animates over. Let me add some more frames here. Just sliding that over. And so now let's watch it one more time so we can animate it out. Character animates in. Texture comes over, and then let's go back to geometry nodes. And again, use about 100 frames to animate it out. So I'm gonna right click, insert keyframe to start the animation. We're at 213, we'll go to 313, right about there. And we will animate this right back out, and then hitting I. Okay, so now, we can kind of view this animation in our look dev preview. So let's watch it really quick, then we'll light it so we can kind of appreciate everything that's happening. And then of course this comes in just like that. And then we'll stop our frames right around 300. So slide that over. I did neglect to show you guys me adding the camera. I had added that in the other version. So I'm gonna go bring it right here. I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the front view. The tilde key is right above the tab key. I'm gonna hit shift A, add my, um, oops. We'll add my camera, control alt zero, snap that to view. If you click on the camera, go here to the camera icon and go to focal length of 85 if you like. It's really up to your preference on that. All right. Now we have that. Make sure you are in the EV render engine, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, and motion blur, but I don't think we really see that here. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, go to light, add an area light. I'm gonna hit G to move it over. I'm gonna hit R to slide it over like this. And then let's go ahead and bring that power to say 500. So let's bring it back farther here. I'm gonna hit Alt D to make an instance of this light. Let's bring it over, I'm gonna hit R to bring it like this. Ooh, there we go, hitting R. Now, looks like these lights are a little too powerful. So let's do that. And then give them kind of a blue color. So let's go ahead and bring these lights down a little bit just so we can kind of nicely see what's going on. And then right behind it, Shift A, we're gonna get another area light. I'm gonna hit G, actually no, we'll just move it back like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit R. I'm gonna hit R twice to kind of rotate it right here in the center. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and make this red and give it about a power of a thousand. And there we go. That's kind of how you create that lighting. Maybe bring it a little bit bigger. 2000. And there we go. Some pretty nice lighting. Let's go ahead and get a background. So we'll go ahead and get a mesh plane. We'll hit R X 90. And then, um, Let's go ahead and bring it behind this bigger light here. Hit the S to bring it up. Let's go to the render view. And right now it's way too bright. So what we'll do is we'll get a new material for it, make the base color black. And then if that's still too bright for you, you can go ahead on the specular and bring it down. So, but I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna go and add a little bit more style here. So I'm gonna hit tab here, right click subdivide, and then I'm gonna bring my number of cuts to be something like right here. So eight, I'm gonna add in a wireframe, wireframe modifier, click replace original, and then bring that thickness down. So now we have a little bit of style here with our piece, and we're pretty much done. So let's click play, let that animate in. You can notice how that lighting is really just bringing out that shading in a really cool way. And then it's gonna go ahead and uncover the material. So now we have this beautiful lighting on the flat portion. And then we're gonna go ahead and animate that out. As you pause, you can see how beautiful that lighting is gonna look on it. Animate that out. And there we go. That is how you create this really cool effect now let's go ahead and see how that looks here in Cycles. I'm using my GPU to render this, so it's pretty quick here in Cycles X, but I'm gonna show you guys how to render this using Concierge in case you need to work on something else or you don't have quite a powerful enough computer to utilize Cycles. I'll show you how to do that. So what I'm gonna do here is um, save this file. It's called For Tut. So let's go and head over to Concierge and um, try this out. You can hit the link in the description if you'd like to follow along. All right, so once you're in your kind of main area, you'll have your kind of credit balance, all your jobs if you have any current active. So I'm gonna go here and upload and launch renders. I'm gonna upload my files and let's find Fort Tut. Click it right there and let it load in. So you'll see it right here in your set. And then we'll go to actions, launch render, and it's going to analyze the file. All right, so it recognized, so now it finished analyzing. It recognized we are in Blender 3.0. We're in cycles. It is an animation. Uh, you can go here to the frames and resolution if you want to change this up or make sure it's kind of lining up with your original look. And I can go ahead and add more samples here. I'm going to keep it at 128. And then here on the hardware and the tips, you can kind of look at all that. You can pick exactly which one, uh, which GPUs you want, depending on the, the uh, speed you want to use how quick, quickly it'll give you your price ranges and all that stuff. I'm really happy with this. In fact, I'm gonna bring my samples up to 300. So let's go ahead and click the render button and kind of let that go. We're gonna go to the job manager. We'll go here to view the details and we're gonna let that run. So there you go, guys. It was at 308 frames, cost me $2 to render all of it. It was really, really quick. It looks like it was about 16 seconds per frame and then just finished all of it in a really quick time. And what's convenient about that is you can let that run, go back to Blender, work on whatever you're doing, go to sleep, anything, and really good value for your time. And all you have to do is download the outputs. It's gonna give you a zip file, which right down here, there's my zip file. I'll unzip it, combine all my PNGs into an animation into a PNG sequence, and that is how you create. So there you go, guys. That is how you create that really cool transformation geometry nodes effect. Thank you, Concierge, for sponsoring the channel, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.